Bibles this morning, would like to ask you to please turn to the book of 1 Peter. I would like to read from 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. The subject that's on my heart this morning is the, the word stranger. S-T-R-A-N-G-E-R. -E stranger. A strong concordance says that a stranger is a pilgrim. It's one whose home is not the land where he is living. It's a foreigner. And sometimes is a resident foreigner. That is, he's living in a place that's not really his homeland. That's, that's some of the definitions of a stranger. Now, there are a lot of strangers in the world. The Word of God tells us a lot about how we ought to be treating strangers. The Word of God says, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Very important that we be willing to take in strangers. It's important that we love people, even if they're a stranger, we need to be loving them. The Word of God is here talking about the main subject that's on my heart today is the fact that the faithful Christians are strangers in this world. You might say they're also strange. That's one of the reasons that one of the reasons that the world has a problem with true faithful Christians. I'm not talking about somebody that walked down the aisle and said they believe Jesus is the Christ or somebody that just done a nominal a statement of belief or something like that. I'm talking about somebody that's really a disciple of Jesus. Somebody that's a follower of Jesus. That person is going to be a stranger to the world. And the world is going to be stranger to him too. And before we become converted and before we become a Christian, we also are strangers to God in this sense. And you'll see as we go along until we become a Christian, we don't have fellowship with God. If we say that we have fellowship with God, and we're not following God's word and God's way, the Bible says that we're a liar. Amen. So we say that we're, I'm a friend of God, but we're not walking in his way, we're, we're a liar. Amen. We're a stranger to God, and God really is a stranger to us. There are a lot of people that think they know God, and, and really, if they were to actually begin to know God, they would find out he's a stranger to me. I did not know him at all. Listen now to the reading of God's word from 1 Peter chapter 1. and Read the first two verses, then we're going to go to chapter 2 and go into a little more detail about strangers and uh, a pilgrim. One whose home is not the land where he's living. The word of God says in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 1, Peter an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Peter is writing to strangers, they were not necessarily strangers to him, but they were strangers to the world because they were people that were following God and were faithful to God. Now turn to chapter 2. We read about how the world hates Jesus Christ. Jesus is a stranger to them and they're a stranger to him. In uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, I want to begin with verse 1. The Word of God says, Wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and evil speakings as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the Word that ye may grow thereby, if so be that ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Have you tasted that the Lord is gracious? Do you realize God has been gracious to you? Do you realize that we're not deserving of even the least of God's blessings? 
And it's only because of the amazing grace of God that we're saved. It's not of our works, not by our works, not according to our works. Brethren, have you tasted that the Lord is gracious? Have you seen how gracious God is to you and to all of this nation? Did you know the only reason that this nation has not already been wiped off the map is because of the amazing grace of God? It's not because of our military. It's not because of our leaders in, in Washington, D.C. The only reason God has not already destroyed this nation is because of His grace. Amen. His mercy and His grace. And so He says here, if you've tasted that the Lord is gracious, He says, now you need to take the, the, the des you need to desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Now verse 4. To, to whom coming as unto a living stone. Did you know who that living stone is? That's Jesus Christ. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men. Do you, do you follow that wording right there? When he says disallowed indeed of men. They were, he was a what to them? Jesus was a what to them? He was a stranger to them. He was disallowed. We're not going to allow you in our city. We're not going to allow you in the temple. He was a stranger to them. Disallowed indeed unto men, but chosen of God and precious. See, they didn't realize he was chosen of God. They did not realize he was God in the flesh. They did not know Jesus. He was a stranger to them. Now, not only was Jesus a living stone, Verse 5 says, ye also, he's talking about the elect, those that are faithful followers of Christ. He says, ye also are lively stones. In other words, there's a great similarity. You follow the wording there? He's a living stone and we're lively stones. That is, there's a great similarity between those who are disciples of Jesus and Jesus. We're not nearly on his plane. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm telling you, brethren, if we're following Jesus, there are going to be people to say, now there's a Christian. Did you know in the Bible nobody ever called themselves Christians? People watched people and said, that person is walking and acting so much like Jesus. We're going to call them Christians. The Bible says repeatedly they were called Christians. That is, the world looked at them and said, you're just like that stone that we don't like. You're like that living stone. You're lively stones. And he was a stranger to us. And he was disallowed of us. And we rejected him. And we reject you because you are a follower of that stone that we hate. Did you know the world hates Jesus Christ? It's sad to say but our nation has finally reached a point we as a nation hate Jesus Christ. You can be a Muslim, you can be a Buddhist, you can be anything you want to be in this world and be accepted in Washington D.C. But when you start naming the name of Jesus Christ, they despise you. You know why? Because they despise the living stone. They despise our head. They despise our Savior. Do you know why they despise him? Because he's a stranger to him. They don't know who he is. And they don't want him, they don't want his name mentioned anywhere. What a different nation we live in today. There was a time that in this nation you could not even run for public office if you were not a Christian. Not just that you believed in God. Not just that you were a follower of God. You had to be a believer in Jesus Christ. And the Supreme Court declared this is a Christian nation. Not just a godly nation, a Christian nation. Our founding fathers believed that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. Our founding fathers loved this living stone. Our founding fathers were strangers to those that hated Jesus. They were willing to follow Jesus. They'd rather be a friend of Jesus than a friend of the world. Now then, verse 6. After, well, let me finish all of verse 5. Verse 5 says, Ye also as lively stones are built up 
a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. You know what we're here to do today? To offer up spiritual sacrifices to God. We're not offering the blood of bulls and goats and calves. Do you know why? Jesus has paid for our sins. The blood of Jesus Christ has saved us. And that's what we trust in when it comes to eternal salvation. But I'll tell you, we're here to offer sacrifices. We're here to offer the sacrifices of our lips, giving praise to God. You know why we were singing those hymns? It was to worship God. You know why we join our hearts and our voices together in prayer? It's to worship and to praise God. You know why we're studying God's holy word? Because we want to honor the God of heaven and earth. We're not here to talk about jokes. We're not here to tell jokes. We're right here. We're here to worship God. I, I thank God for the fellowship and everything else we have. But the primary purpose is to come and worship God. So he says, you are lively stones, you're built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Listen now carefully to verse 6. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. Who is that chief cornerstone that's elect and precious? That's Jesus Christ. And he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe, he is precious. Is he precious to you today? Is Jesus precious to you? If you believe, if you know that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the Living, no matter if you really know that, he is precious to you. He is more precious than any, anything. He is precious. Jesus is precious. Sometimes we look at these little children, we look at these little babies and say, oh, that baby is precious. Well, they are. They are precious. Listen, brethren, there's none as precious as Jesus is. Nobody is as precious as Jesus. I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but Unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Brethren, those that are disobedient, they hate this precious stone. He is a, what is he to them? He's a stranger to them. They don't know each other. They don't have any fellowship with each other. And a stone of stumbling. Who is he a stone of stumbling to? He's a stone of stumbling to those that don't believe that he is the Christ. And those that are disobedient. He's a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. I'll tell you what he is to us. He's the solid rock. We sing sometimes on Christ the solid rock I stand. I'll tell you he's our chief cornerstone. It's on him. It's in him that we hide. In the cleft of the rock we hide. He's the rock of ages. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That's our rock. We know him. But these others, they're strangers to him. The disobedient, he's strangers to them. And they don't love him and they don't like him. He's disallowed. He's a stranger to them. He's a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient. Wherefore unto, where, uh, where unto also they were appointed. But ye, now listen carefully to who, about these who are friends of Jesus. These lively stones, listen. But ye are a chosen. You hear the wording there? But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a... What's that next word? Peculiar. Peculiar people. Now, listen, brethren. I could have come this morning with purple hair. Now, I would have been pretty peculiar, wouldn't I? And that's not what this is talking about. This isn't talking about looking weird, dressing weird, acting weird. This is not doing something that makes you stand out in the crowd. Rather than a peculiar people are people that are following Jesus. They're peculiar to whom? The world. That's exactly right. They're strangers to the world. But they're friends of Jesus. Jesus knows them and, and they know Jesus. And yet the word of God says here they're a peculiar people. They're different. That's what that word peculiar means. They're different. They're not like the rest of the world. A peculiar people... 
that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Listen carefully now. Which in time past were not a people. You know, brethren, before God came to me and delivered me and saved me, I was nothing. And you were nothing. You were nothing but a wretched sinner. You were filth. Which in time past you were not a people, but are now people of God. Which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as... What, what are the next three words there? Uh, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. Do you see in its context what he's saying there? He's saying you're strangers and pilgrims. To whom? To whom are you strangers and pilgrims? The world. the world. Let me say this very clearly. If you're not a stranger to the world, you've conformed to the world. If you don't look and act and walk and talk different than the world, you're not, as this, the Word of God describes here, you're not one of these that's being described in this passage of Scripture. You don't love Jesus. You don't know Jesus. Jesus is not your friend. If the world doesn't say, there is a... There's a stranger. There's a peculiar person. Parents are going to raise their children that way? Oh, that's peculiar. Parents are going to do what? Man, that's strange. They got to dress how? Man, that's weird. Don't you know how everybody dresses today? Don't you know how all the world girls dress today? Don't you know what girls look like today? Listen, brethren, if your girls look like the world, if your girls look like the rest of the girls in the world, shame on you. And if your boys look like the rest of the world, shame on you as parents. Your children and you are supposed to be a peculiar people. You're supposed to be a stranger, strangers and pilgrims. This isn't our home. This world is not my home. I'm a stranger here. I'm a stranger to this world. I've got a home somewhere else. I'm a foreigner. I'm an alien. Well, when I was a child, we used to talk about aliens. We used, we used to really believe there were Martians up there. And they were green. And they had funny looking heads. And we thought they were flying saucers. And we thought all those kind of things. Just, you know, that was what we thought as children. We, th we call them aliens. You could recognize an alien, couldn't you? In this country, can't you recognize aliens? They look different. They act different. They talk different. Well, I'll tell you what, brethren. If you're a Christian, you're going to look just as different, act just as different, and talk just as different as some foreigner that's from another country. Because if you're following Jesus, you're a stranger to the world. You're a peculiar people. One of the worst things in the world is, is when the church starts trying to act like the world and be like the world. And try to attract the world. Listen brethren. The true church of Jesus Christ will not attract the world. The true church of Jesus Christ is as a city that's set upon a hill. Whose light cannot be hid. And you know what? Men love. What do they love rather than light? Men love darkness rather than light. So if the light is shining here. You know what's going to happen to those that are evil and hate God. You know what they're going to do? They're going to get out of here in a hurry. They're either going to be converted and changed and become a peculiar people and become part of this citizenry or else they're going to go somewhere else. You know why? Because they don't want to be around the L-I-G-H-T. See, God is, God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. So if I'm going to be darkness, then I'm a stranger to I'm a stranger to God. I'm a stranger to God. God's not going to have fellowship with me if I'm going to walk in darkness. I'm not going to be a friend of God. He's not going to call me his friend. He's not going to have fellowship with me. If I walk in darkness, I'm an enemy of God. In fact, back up just two pages from where we're presently reading. Back up to James chapter 4 and verse 4. In James chapter 4 and verse 4, the word of God says... Ye adulterous, adulterers and adulteresses. You know, we don't even want to talk about that today, do we? I had a preacher tell me recently, I can't preach against adultery. Half our church is involved in adultery. You know what they are? They are strangers to God. Strangers to God. They have conformed to the world. 
The divorce rate in the world is 50%. Brethren, it's not that way upon, among disciples of Christ. I'm not saying somebody that's been divorced cannot be a disciple of Christ. I am saying that children of God that are following Christ are going to do everything they can to keep from getting divorced. They're going to, they're going to try to keep their marriage vows till death do us part. They're going to try to follow the word of God. The word of God says in James chapter 4. Let me, tell, let me just stop again and say this. If you're running around on your companion, you're an adulterer. And that's a grievous sin. If you're a woman and you're running around on your husband, that's a grievous sin. And God will judge you for that. It's a very serious sin. The adulterers and adulteresses. Now there is physical, literal adultery and there's spiritual adultery. Watch this carefully. The adulterers and adulteresses. Know you not the, the, that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. If I'm going to be a friend of the world, am I a stranger to the world if I'm a friend of the world? Am I a stranger to the world if I'm a friend of the world? I'm not a stranger to the world. If I'm a friend of the world, they say, hey baby, hey bubba, you're mine, we're friends. But if you're going to be a friend of the world, you are the enemy of God. You cannot be a disciple of Christ and be a friend of the world. Sometimes, I remember when I was young, 16 to 23, 24, I wanted, everybody, I wanted to be everybody's friend. I did. I wanted to be everybody's friend. And I would, if I was around some people in college, well, I, I looked one, I was like a chameleon. You know what a chameleon does whenever he's around some colors? Adapt. Uh, he, he adapts and he looks like that color. And then he gets over here, it's kind of like politicians, you know, they speak out of both sides of your mouth, just lie. Tell this people, oh, I'm for abortion. Tell this people, oh, I'm against abortion. Oh, I'm for gun control. Oh, I'm against gun control. Oh, I'm for homosexuality. Oh, I'm against homosexuality. I tell you what, brethren, you can go on the internet and you can hear some of these guys say every one of these things you want to hear. Both sides, both issues. They're liars. And we're liars if we claim to be a friend of God and we're walking in darkness. If we're a friend of the world, if you are a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. You need to be a stranger to the world. I want people to look at you and say, man, he's strange. Not because you have purple hair, or, and I'm not just picking on purple haired people. Uh, do you understand what being strange is? I'm talking about peculiar people. I'm not talking about doing something to make yourself look strange from a physical appearance. I'm talking about you living in such a way that you look strange to the world. Go with me back in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2 very quickly. In Ephesians chapter 2, the Word of God here probably as much as anywhere in the Bible talks a lot about strangers and pilgrims and tells us there was a there was a time that we were strangers and pilgrims to God. We were aliens from God. We were just as far away from God as anybody has ever been. So don't ever think you're don't ever think when you see somebody that's away from God, well, gosh, I've never have been that far away from God. Oh yes you have. Until God quickened you, until you were born again, you were just like the world. You were, you were as devilish as anybody else you can think about. In uh, Ephesians chapter 2, let's begin with verse uh, 10, uh, 11. Ephesians chapter 2, beginning in verse 11, the word of God says, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were, what are the next two words? At that time ye were what? Without Christ. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. At this time, they were strangers to whom? God. God, thank you. At this time, they were strangers to God. And those in First Peter we're reading about, they were strangers to whom? The world. The world. You see? I want us to learn 
you're a stranger either way. You're either a stranger to God or you're a stranger to the world. And I'll promise you, brethren, you don't want to be a stranger to God. You want to fight against God? I don't. I don't want the judgments of God. I don't want justice from God. I want mercy. Amen. I want grace. I know what I was. I don't want to ever go back there. What was I? I was an alien. I was a foreigner. Watch now. Watch what happens. Verse 13 says, but now, but now. Isn't it, isn't it good when you're reading along, you're reading about how bad we were, and it said, but, but. In fact, if you back up earlier in this chapter, it says, uh, in, in the first three verses, it talks about how bad we were before we were born of the Spirit of God. The last phrase in verse 3 says, and we're by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. You see, here's what we were, but God, but God. And then now we're reading in verse 12, we were aliens, we were strangers, we were without God, we were without hope. But now, verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Isn't that wonderful? You know the reason, the only reason that I can draw out of God? Because of the blood of Jesus. Do you know the only reason I'm going to be in eternal heaven is because of the blood of Jesus. Do you know the only reason I'm a child of God is because of the blood of Jesus Christ. It's not 99% grace and 1% work. It's 100% the grace of God. Amen. Come down to verse 19. Verse 19 says, Now therefore ye are no more strangers. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> this is uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Don't you know those saints in Ephesus were happy to finally hear now. I was a stranger. I was alienated from God and now I'm a fellow citizen. Are you a fellow citizen of the kingdom of heaven? Are you a fellow citizen of this country? Are you a fellow citizen? Are you a citizen in, in the kingdom of heaven? If you're a citizen in the kingdom of heaven, guess what? You look fill in the blank. You look strange to the world. You look peculiar. If you're living different, if you're following Jesus, you're a stranger to the world. Back up in your Bibles to John chapter 15 very quickly. John chapter 15. <clears throat> Start with verse 14. You know, <laughs> I hear preachers say sometimes, just walk down the aisle, join the church, everything will be wonderful. It'll be a life of roses. It'll just be a, a bed of ease. It's just, you know, we're not having trouble. You're not get sick if you join the church. You're not gonna you're gonna be rich if you join the church. We're, we're just I'll tell you, brethren, that's a bunch of hogwash. That's a lie from the devil. When you walk down the aisle and you begin to make a public confession that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, the devil has his crosshairs on you and he's after you. And he's going to attack you. And he's going to try to hurt you. And he's going to try to get you to go back to being what you used to be. In uh, John chapter 15 verse 14, Jesus says, Ye are my friends if... Is this a conditional friendship? Yes, it is. Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, and that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you, if he sent you out. To bring forth fruit, guess what you're going to look like to the world? If you're out there bringing forth fruit, what are you going to look like to the world? Stranger, Stranger peculiar. <laughs> Verse 17 says, These things I command you that you love one another. If the world hate you, you see what he's leading up to? If the world does what? If the world hates you. Does that hurt your feelings when the world hates you? 
Well, if, if you're going to let that hurt your feelings, brethren, you're soon going to stop being a follower of Jesus. If you're not willing to suffer for Christ's sake, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And so Jesus just makes it very plain. He says in verse uh, 18, If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Did the world hate Jesus? Did the world hate that living stone? That rock of ages, did the world hate him? And if you're lively stones, what will the world do to you? The world will hate you. He says, if you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. If you're following Jesus, the world's going to hate you. And let me say this very carefully in closing. Turn to Romans chapter 12. Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 12. I want to give you one verse of scripture, two verses in closing. In Romans chapter 12, listen please to verses 1 and 2. I want everybody here to leave with the desire that you want to be a stranger to the world. That you're not afraid to be a stranger to the world. I want you to leave with a determination to be a friend of God. We sang that song. We sang it this morning. Did I pick it out? No. Well, how did Brother Josh know to sing, for us to sing, what a friend we have in Jesus. The Holy Spirit was guiding him in the choosing of the songs. And we're talking now about what a wonderful friend we have in Jesus. He's my best friend. He's, he's the best friend in the world. The Word of God says here, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world. Is he talking to brethren? Yes. First, first phrase says, I beseech you therefore, brethren. You know what happens a lot of times when people begin to follow Christ? And they begin to love that living stone? And they begin to make changes in their lives. You know what happens sometimes? They're persecuted. And what happens when they begin to be persecuted? And people begin to make fun of them. What happens sometimes? They begin to go back and be what? What's the phrase in verse, in verse 2? Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Brethren, be a... I want you to be a stranger to the world, and I want you to be a friend of God. May God help us to do that every day of our lives is my prayer for Christ's sake.